Nature, an editorial, if you will show this, Zachary. Missing data means we'll probably never know how many people died of COVID. Huge discrepancies and estimates of excess mortality reveal not just how difficult the calculations are, but how far the world has to go in recording how people die. Now, <laughs> excess mortality, <laughs> like estimates of excess mortality, specifically don't require that you know how people died. That's the point. Right. That is, that is the point. Also, this editorial, I was going to walk through how stupid it is, but I'm not going to. So again, we've already had science anointing Fauci as the next coming of Jesus Christ. And now we have in the same week Nature, the other preeminent science journal in the world, with this pap. And they are referring to uh, an article that they published this week out of, oops, um, called uh, The WHO Estimates of Excess Mortality Associated with the COVID-19 Pandemic. And in this article, we have figure one, which has global excess and reported COVID-19 deaths and death rates per 100,000 population. Now, this is cumulative, but um, check out how COVID was killing people, and then um, the rate increased in 2021. Hmm. Hmm. And then this is not cumulative. This is just um, reported COVID-19 death rate per 100,000. This is figure 1B of the same article that just came out. Um, the death rate per 100,000 and COVID was killing people, northern summer of 2020. Uh, it dipped slightly and then it, boy, did it start killing people again. Except it's not that COVID was killing people, right? It's that we have excess mortality, right? So it's the red line. So I'm, I'm reading that like someone... I was saying that as if someone might look at this and go like, oh my God, look at all the COVID deaths. Like, no, we have deaths attributed to COVID with the red line and we have excess mortality with the purple line here. And the purple line has some, has some spikes, um, honestly, right around the rollout of the vaccine and then right around when suddenly everyone had access to the vaccine. And you can't say from this, that it was COVID, or it was the vaccine, or it was hepatitis, or it was cancer, it was heart disease, or it was anything. But what you can do is you can say, let's look at data on excess mortality, which is death counts. That's all it takes, death counts. Compare it to previous death counts. And then separately, let's look at all of the things that happened in the world to which particular spikes might be attributed. So this is consistent. The WHO's report, published in Nature this week, is consistent with Ben's work from earlier. But somehow the Nature News report, the editorial version of Nature, instead reports this headline. Missing data mean we'll probably never know how many people died of COVID. That's actually not the message of the work they're reporting on. Yeah. Well, it's funny. It's like, I mean, we know that people in many places, worst of all science, but many places, people report you know, they read the title of a paper that leans in some direction they want, or they read the title in the abstract, and they don't delve any further than this. They cite it because they're, they've become advocates for some position, and the thing seems to push in that direction, so it doesn't almost matter what it says. Right. And so, in some sense, this phony world that they've created, yeah. the phony Tony world, <laughs> is um, basically hungry for stuff that you can point to for your laugh line if you're Stephen mm. Colbert or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's just stuff. It doesn't matter that there's anything underneath it. It can just be an assertion that comes from a place like Yale, right? And it's right. good enough. And so that, you know, whoa, boy, that sounds like a sophisticated analysis that the, there's missing data that's going to prevent us from ever knowing, right? They want to seed the idea, oh, we're never going to know. Why are we never going to know? Because we're never going to do the right study. And why are we never going to do the right study? Because a lot of people can't afford for us to do the right study. It's not hard. The right. data isn't missing. Yes, it will be noisy. But, you know, do you know what those giant buildings full of people who do science are about? Knowing how to study questions like this. And, and frankly, once, once you've paired it all away and you've... you've you know, you realize that, oh my God, uh, the PCR tests aren't the right things to be testing for this and died with versus died of COVID is really messy and we're never gonna fully untangle that. The measure of excess mortality doesn't require any of that. It doesn't require that we untangle any of that. doesn't right. require that That's we know of it. any of it. It is so beautiful. It is so simple. And yes, if there's something else that happened in 
late 2019, early 2020, or in late 2020, early 2021 through now that we are yet unaware of, we will potentially mistake one, one pattern for the other. But excess mortality simply looks at how many people died. And historically, at the same time of year, how many people died and how many more are there? Yeah, well, and, you know, even, even if there were, were something that magically showed up at that same moment, right? We have various different countries in which we had different patterns. And so you can unpack that as well. There's nothing here that is beyond study. This, yeah. this is not harder than your average question. In fact, this is so much easier than we are making it out to be. Yes, it is. And unfortunately, we're now, I think the new game is um, that they've reversed the burden of proof, which is one of their favorites. Yeah. Right, that that's what happened uh, with these people who are extremely high quality scientists on DeSantis's panel. The reason that we disagree mm -hmm. is that they've had the burden of proof reversed on them, and so they're trying to be very careful because they've mm -hmm. spent careers being careful. But mm -hmm. the problem is, careful has been flipped on its head. Yep. You know, so um, there's no reason. I will point out it's not the only thing that went missing, according to this uh, report. Do you notice that Pfizer's document, its agreement with Israel, went missing? I don't. What what report? What are we talking about? Uh, the report that you just put up, saying that the uh, um, the uh, data has is missing, and that it will prevent us from knowing who whether or not we've had an increase in. Oh, some something else has gone missing. Something and else has is, gone missing. And it is what? It is the agreement between Pfizer and the state of Israel has apparently also gone missing. It's just. Um, it's just gone. They don't know. Yeah. Um, apparently, they had oh. someone in over the weekend to clean up. And so, anyway, it's possible she placed it somewhere. But That'll happen. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it sure. does happen. Yeah. Right. I mean, sure. Yeah. Um, but, yes. I mean, it, Israel should really get its act together. It's very disorganized and not, you know, not able to get things done in general, right? Wait. No, that's like well, every other nation state after Israel. I mean, let's, you know, yeah. let's, let's steel man their argument. I mean, Israel, you know, it's a small country, but it's still a big place. There are a lot of places they could have, you know, so there are some... Presumably they haven't checked absolutely everywhere. Right. They're going to have to do a systematic check of all of the cubbies and other mm -hmm. small places in Israel that this document could be hiding. Um, sure. Right. Mm -hmm. And oh, and that's before they even get to the computers where they I was just going to say, not to, not to say anything about um, the virtual universe. Right. Yeah. That, yeah, the number of. So many cubbies. Yeah, in, so on, in Israel cubbies. inside their computers, there's got to be, I mean, hundreds of places that document could hide. <laughs> Maybe even orders of magnitude more than that. <laughs> Who knows? 